words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The message this morning is entitled, Understanding Godly Love. I remember that when I was much younger, one of the songs of the day was a song that was entitled, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. There's some other words to it, I don't remember them all, but indeed, what the world does need is love. But not love as the world brings, but love as only God can bring. What's the difference between godly love and, and worldly love? And what are the dangers of worldly love? We'll look at the latter tonight in the evening service at 6 o'clock. But in looking at godly love, the message that we read in Scripture is a very good place for us to begin. One of the things that I see in that eighth verse about godly love is that it never This week, part of my reading had me in the book of Genesis and I was reading about Jacob and his love for Rachel. Times were different then and the means uh, are different than they are today and the way in which uh, they married and how that took place is different from what we do today. But he loved Rachel. Rachel. But he ended up having to, to, to marry Leah first. And he had waited seven years. And then he got fooled into marrying someone that he didn't want to marry. But he stayed and he did another seven years so that he could marry Rachel. And I began to to see and I began to hear <laughs> that love is a sweet melody and it never ends and that if if we're going to experience godly love in our lives and, and in our marriage if it's going to be a godly love, then it's got to be one that can persevere even in times of difficulty. Even in times when you may have been fooled or tricked. But if there is true love, it also will never fail. One of the other things about love that we we need to know is that the origination of love comes from the Father. If you look at uh, 1 John 4.16, it says, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God. You see, there's one thing about godly love that we need to understand. Godly love is balanced and equal. Let me say that again because it's very important. Godly love is balanced and equal. All of you that have done math, all of you that have uh, maybe studied logic, if God is love, God equals love, they are dokate, right? Same. And that equation is balanced. God is love. It is equal. And something that we ought to take home in our lives and in our marriages is that when we profess to love one another, 
that it has to be balanced and equal. And so we can't put someone on the spot and expect to love them in hopes that they're going to do something more. Because God didn't ask us to do anything more. He just sent His Son. And godly love is potent in building God's church because it's the most powerful and ultimate force in the universe. It brings salvation. It allows us to be more like Him. Let's look at this, this verse here in, in 1 John 4, verses 7 through 16. 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. You see, God first loved us. That's the reason that we're able to love. That's why when we, we say that, well, should I marry someone who's not a Christian? We say you shouldn't be unequally yoked and you, you try to move around that and you try to say, well, yeah, but, you know, she loves me and I love her and, or, or vice versa, if you're talking from the other side. But you see, what you might be experiencing is a worldly love from one person and a godly love from the other. And you have to know what you're getting into. Love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. We're back to that equation again. God's love was revealed among us in this way, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. So God's love is life-giving, not life-destroying. In this love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. Then if we, we move over into verse 13, it says, By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given of us His Spirit. Godly love is a love that is to be shared. It's a love so that we might love. God's love, as we, we see in 1 Corinthians in our Scripture, is verifiable. Love is patient. God wants us to love our spouse, love our children. He gives us opportunities to build that love into one of patience. Love is kind and not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love is verifiable. And love does not insist on having its own way. Love is is not irritable or resentful. And it doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in truth. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. And it never ends. There are some things that I'd like for you, and I believe God would like for you too, to take home from the message this morning. That is, if, if there is a, a godly love in your home, then God has to be there by all parties. Or someone is only giving you a worldly love in return. And tonight you're going to discover the dangers of that. And why some of you might be struggling in your lives and relationships with one another. 
And if you know that, then it allows you to, to be able to move past the difficulties and look for the hope and the promises that love never fails, that your love will never fail, that you can't be wrong. If you have a godly love, the king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness never faileth. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Today, let us remember that love is balanced. It doesn't depend on someone doing more for you. That love is a gift. You know, the wise men, when they came and they offered those gifts to Jesus, I hope Christmas isn't too far past us, they weren't expecting anything in return. They came so that they could honor Jesus, King of Kings, the Messiah. And they placed those gifts there, their most precious gifts. All they wanted to do was to worship Him on their hands and knees and then return. How many of you can love in such a way that you would give everything your most precious gift without assurance of a return. That's the way you love your children. That's the way you love your spouse. If that's the way you love the other members of the church, if that's the way we love one another, we are loving as God loved us. And because God's love never fails, if you are loving in a godly manner, be not concerned at how God will work that because He loves you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day and for this message of love and for your Son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you showed us a true love, a real love, a love that is verifiable, a love that is balanced and equal, a love that endures all things, and a love that never fails. So that we would be able to identify your love with what is worldly love. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you would watch over us today Place your arms and your hedge of protection around us from those who would try to bring harm and destruction. And Lord, allow us to love one another because you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.